Humans are the most advanced species of animal to ever step foot on the earth. But how did it come to this? How are we much more intelligent than every other living organism on this planet? Why are we the king of them all? We weren't always like this. The answer to all those questions is Darwinian evolution. But what is Darwinian evolution? To simply put it, Darwinian evolution is a theory of evolution formulated by the English naturalist Charles Darwin that organisms change over time as a result of heritable physical or behavioural characteristics. However, to understand that definition more clearly, let's look into how Darwin came up with this theory. In September 15, 1835, Darwin travelled to the Galapagos Islands. It was here he discovered evolution. Although being close together, the Galapagos archipelago consisted of many different environments from each other, which caused living organisms in this archipelago to have a vastly different appearance with each other, although being the same species, in order to be better suited for the environment they live in. A good example of this is Darwin's finches. During his travels around the Galapagos, Darwin collected samples of several different finches from each of the islands. What he discovered by doing this is incredible. Each finch from each island had a different shape for their beak. For example, in the islands, with abundance of fruits and nuts, the finches had a parrot-like beak in order to crack open these nuts and fruits. However, in islands with a lack of fruit but were abundant in insects, the finches had a thinner and longer beak, perfect for feeding on insects. Darwin theorised that all these finches from each island were related and once had a common ancestor, but later evolved into different species over time to be better suited to the current environment that they lived in. But how did the finches evolve? To answer this, let's look at another example. Let's say there's a female brown bear with long claws and a lighter fur, and a male brown bear that has a slightly darker fur and short claws. Let's say these two bears mate and have an offspring. This offspring will have half the characteristics from its mother and half the characteristics from its father. Let's say this offspring has the long claws from its mother but the darker shade of fur from its father. However, this offspring may also have random features neither from its mother or its father. Let's say more fluffy fur. These are known as random genetic mutations and can occur in the DNA when conceived. DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid, is found at the nucleus of a cell. It is like the blueprint of a living organism and contains the information for all the characteristics of this organism. When two organisms procreate, half of the DNA of the father and half of the DNA of the mother will go to the offspring if sexual reproduction was used to procreate, or the entire genetic information from the parent if asexual reproduction was used. However, when producing the offspring, a random error or mutation may occur in the DNA, causing the offspring to have characteristics unique to its parents. This is what a genetic mutation is. A genetic mutation may be a hindering trait, such as a disability, but may also be a trait that benefits the organism. However, it is usually a trait that neither benefits nor hinders the organism. These genetic mutations will then be passed on to future generations, meaning our little bear friend's fluffy fur will be passed on onto its offspring and so on. But what decides if a genetic mutation is negative or a beneficial one? The answer is natural selection. Natural selection is the process through populations of living organisms adapt and change. To better understand this definition, let's look at another example. Let's say a greenish brown beetle living on the leaves of trees in the Amazon rainforest mates with a similar beetle of the same species and gives birth to some offspring. For the sake of this example, let's say it gives birth to three different offspring. The first one has the same greenish brown coat as its parents. The second one, due to some random genetic mutation, has a more bright coat 
unsuitable for the environment it lives in due to being unable to camouflage. The third beetle also has a genetic mutation and has a more green color coat that has a similar shade of green to the leaves it feeds on and inhabits. Now let's say a lizard that feeds on this species of beetle comes along and decides to prey upon these beetles. The second beetle with the more bright colored coating will be more likely to be eaten due to being unable to camouflage as well as the other beetles. The first beetle has a better chance of survival than the second beetle but would still not be the best at camouflaging from the predator. The third beetle however will have the best chance of survival due to having a green coat that better camouflages with the leaves it inhabits. If this third beetle lives up to the age where it can mate and passes on its traits to its offspring, over several generations the population of beetles with the more green colour coat will be more predominant due to having a better chance of survival. This essentially is natural selection, where nature in a way selects the more beneficial traits from things like predators and the environment. So, how does this link to Darwinian evolution? Well, natural selection decides which traits are better suited for a species to survive and helps get rid of hindering traits. This ensures that the best traits are passed on to a living organism's offspring to help them be better adapted to the environments they live in and help them have a better chance of survival. Over generations upon generations, these traits will become more predominant among the population of a certain species and sooner or later, the species will be too different from its old self to be considered the same species. Thus, a new species is born. This is what evolution essentially is. Overall, Darwinian evolution is a process that takes thousands or millions of years and helps increase a species chance of survival and helps it adapt better to its environment to be safe from predators, help catch more prey and help it find a mate. It is a simple yet long process that led our species to be the most intelligent of them all. Without Darwinian evolution, we definitely wouldn't be who we are today. Darwinian evolution is truly exceptional.